teaching the language is, is very important. Now, uh, I'm going to call on Leela, uh, uh, the Honorable Leela Evans, who's the uh, member of the House of Assembly for Torngat Mountains, uh, to say a few words as well. Leela, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. And thanks for coming. I appreciate it. You know, actually, I think I might stand. Okay. I might uh, come over by you, actually. Great job. I'll turn this on. Yeah, I'm actually it's probably a little bit too short to stand, actually. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to stand anyway, just so I can see everyone there in the back. And um, I brought uh, some notes to keep me on track because um, a lot of times when I'm dealing with the issues, there are serious issues that impact the people in my district. and. And sometimes it's actually heart-wrenching. So I tend to sometimes uh, go on or just get diverted to another topic. So, so I thought this important to stick to the uh, stick to the topic. So I got some notes here to keep me on track. First off, I'm the MHA for Tongat Mountains. That's the most northern district in our entire province. My district is made up of formerly Innu and Inuit communities. It's indigenous communities, there's other people that live in those communities as well, but it's very, very important to, for people to understand that. So my district is entirely indigenous. Um, and of course the theme is we're, t we're talking about education, we're talking about teachers and education, so I'm going to try to stick to that. Um, but when I talk in the House of Assembly, which is our government assembly for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, I talk a lot about access to services and infrastructure that impact the quality of life in my communities, right? Because I don't know how much of the history even the Newfoundland and Labradorian students have of, of the Inu and Inuit of Northern Labrador, let alone the people coming from, 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 your, area, from your country, countries, uh, plural. Um, but, um, we have, unfortunately, a history of, um, you know, the word is um, intergenerational trauma, right? We had um, what the people across Canada are learning about residential schools, but also, too, is what a lot of people don't realize in this province in Newfoundland and Labrador, there wasn't just the programs of resettlement for the airport in Newfoundlanders to bring them in to the urban regions for the, so they could have access to services. Um, we've actually had relocation, we call it, where um, people were brought into the church and told that they were going to be moved south, south uh, from their communities. And the reason why they were did that was because, you know, the government members and the church members uh, the establishment knew that the Inuit would not speak out in church. So it was a way to silence them and, and actually get them to accept that they were going to have to move south. And they moved south to communities where they may not have known anyone. They were moved into little small houses. Sometimes there were multiple families in a small house with no, with no running water, no sewage. Uh, the, basically, these were Inuit hunters and fisher people, and they were moved into um, established communities where all the fishing birds were taken, <coughs> where the hunting areas were already established be between families. So it really impacted those people, right? And over time, a lot of them did move back further north, closer to, to where the original communities were, but they weren't, they weren't able to go back. So that, to us, that was really one of the major starts for intergenerational trauma. And unfortunately, in my district, intergenerational trauma is not something we've talked about in the past, the past harms. Because of the lack of services, the lack of infrastructure, the lack of supports to the northern communities in my district, cycle is still continuing, right? So it's important. Now I want to. I'm talking a little bit about education, and I had a little little quote here, and it says here, um, Labrador can't continue to be an afterthought. So what? What? Like when you say something is an afterthought, it's after you planned and started implementing something. 
you start to realize, oh, we never thought of that. That's an afterthought, right? So just, I just, and I, one thing I'm always careful when I'm talking about issues and gaps and harm for my district, I always want to show you an example. Show you an, ex show you an example. Um, Labrador can't continue to be an afterthought. Well, there I am in the fall. School just starts, September. School just started. And do you know what I heard? <laughs> this is the way I talk because um, I heard that high school students in our small communities that were relying on doing <coughs> online classes, CDLI classes, right? Center of Development, uh, was it? Uh, learning Innovation. <laughs> yeah, Learning Innovation. So they were getting ready to do their online courses. But the province had decided that they were going to have any courses in Labrador time slots, the Atlantic time zone. They had taken mm -hmm. all the courses online and put them into the Newfoundland time zone time slot. Now, what's the problem with that? First off, it's hard for families because in small communities, you have to go home for your lunch break. Right? So students were going home a half an hour after or a half an hour before. But the real impact to my students' education was they're there in their classroom. You're doing your course, you're doing your course. It might be an English course or it could be a social studies course. All of a sudden, if you were doing an online course, you had to get up halfway through the lecture and go and, reg and, and get online for the, for the online course. So you, let, you lost half your lecture. When you finished your online course, you had to quickly hurry up because in your school, the other course that you're doing next had already started a half an hour. So if you wanted to do any online courses, you're losing a half an hour of your regular courses. You're losing an, uh, at one end and on the other end, right? So I want to ask you now, as, as, as university students who's interested in education, as people here now who are teaching in universities, what message is that sending to our students in, in our indigenous communities in Northern Labrador? You know what it says? It says it didn't matter enough for us to actually take that into consideration and try and, and accommodate you. And so what I did is I was shocked, I was shocked, I couldn't believe it. I said, really? So I got a petition to present in the House of Assembly on that, asking a return to Labrador time slots for the students. And the Minister of Education never stood and responded once when I presented my petition, because I presented it multiple times, right? Labrador shouldn't be an afterthought. There's another thing I say too, and I, I need you to understand because a lot of times I sound angry. <laughs> I sound angry. Mr. Kirk, we used to call him Mr. Kirk. We didn't call him Mr. Anderson. He was my he was my teacher. He taught us math. I think it was last year I was there. Right? That was a long time ago. Um, but what what message is that sending also to the teachers who are trying to teach our students? What message is that sending to the parents? But you want to know something? Our parents already got that message time and time again. Right? So looking at that now, you're, 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 you're missing your time. So what message is that sending to the students? If a student is struggling a little bit, is that going to encourage them to do the courses? Because you know what courses are offered on CDLI? Online courses? I went, yeah, I went in, as soon as, as soon as I heard that, I went in and looked. The advanced math courses, the science courses, the English courses. You want to go into post-secondary, a lot of times the door will be closed if you don't have the courses. So if you're not doing the advanced math and you want to do a science course, you get ready and you go, you're trying to go in, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, you might... If you're willing to work hard and do the foundation courses and work your way up, you might be able to do it, but you're already behind. 
right? That's why I got elected, boy. That's why I got elected. Because the people in my district were so sick and tired of being an afterthought. You know, and I sound angry and I, you know, like I'm actually a very funny person. <laughs> very humorous. I actually got a really, really funny per, uh, personality. People laugh. A lot of times now people don't know if they should laugh because they expect me to be so serious. <laughs> but I spend my time all the time upset. And I'm not angry. And like, like people would say, I'm doing this. I'm speaking on this. Or I'm advocating for this because it's close to my heart. This is something that I care about. It's close to my heart. But you want to know something? When I'm in the House of Assembly, the issues I talk on, it's not close to my heart. It is my heart. I realize that. I grew up in McCovic. I got friends and relatives all along the coast. If somebody is impacted by a gap in health services and becomes sick, maybe dies, uh, if, if, if students can't, you know, can, you know are, are, are being hindered where they can't succeed and we see how wrong that is, right? It is my heart. My heart breaks every day, right? It's really, really difficult. It's, it's a struggle, right? And it shouldn't be allowed in 2020. Now, we talked about the online courses. Let me tell you another issue students have, to, uh, have, uh, have as a barrier, teachers have as a barrier. We have trouble retracting and uh, attracting and retaining student, uh, teachers. Do you know what the internet speed on the North Coast of Labrador is in Trungat Mountains? In the capital of Nunatsibut, Hopedale, in, in Nain, where there's the biggest Inuit community on the North Coast, in Napishish. The internet is at number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. When you go on the computer, more times than not, your internet speed will be 50 megabits per second to 200 megabits per second here on the island. In my district, when I got elected, it was 0 0.2, now one, 0.2 to 1.9 megabits per second on average. Now, our university students are here from MUN, right? The minimum requirement to do MUN courses when you go into the MUN website and look at it, it's three megabits per second. Sometimes we reach three, actually, in the evening when everybody is off or there's nothing going on early in the morning. You can say, wow, this is fast. And you go in, you might be, you might be breaking three megabits per second, but 0.2 to 1.9. And when I got elected, and I got elected in May 2019, and I'm sorry, I'm not angry, I'm just hurt. I had a meeting, I got a meeting with Bell, because Bell is the internet provider, and the MP for Labrador, the Member of Parliament for Labrador. And we, I wanted to talk about this to see, because we needed better internet services for our students, our high school students, our university students. Oh, by the way, we have a lot of the teachers who teach in our communities do their masters. I, in Hopedale, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, a little bit more than halfway between Goose Bay and Nain, I, I mean, my district people are familiar with those communities. Um, uh, I got calls because the teachers couldn't do their master's courses. 0.2 megabits to, per second to 1.9, right? Um, so, so, like for for a teacher, like what would be your incentive to actually continue to teach her after you learn that, right? Now, this was before COVID, so I had the meeting, and there was there was federal dollars available. There was federal dollars, free money, for rural areas, remote areas, northern areas. We fell under all three, and I was there uh, uh, talking with the MP for Labrador and Bella Light, the three, three, three senior management people. And they were discussing this money. It was a cost share to Bell. It was either 90% federal dollars and Bell had to contribute 10, or it might have been 70 federal dollars, 30% 30 for, for Bell. And each region, there was areas in the South Coast that was actually, they were playing on money for to do upgrades, upgrades 
there was money for Lake Melville they were applying on for, for upgrades, Lab West, all these districts, and Northern Labrador. It was only the, the Torngat region, Northern Labrador, right, my six indigenous communities, they weren't even applying on the money. So I, I, here I am, listening to this, and I says, why? Well, we, we, you know, we have the worst internet. Not only that, it's the services, like a lot of times services will go out, uh, and, and, and people won't even have access to internet or the phone. We, we need it, we need upgrades. And in actual fact, they didn't know me because I had only been elected a little over a month. People know me now. <laughs> <laughs> right? But honestly, I want to say the reason was the infrastructure was too dated. It was going to cost them too much, even with this huge amount of federal investment, this free money, it was going to cost Bill too much to do anything on the North Coast. And you know what I said? I said, Okay, so it's too bad now, this is the way it talks, it's too bad now, too dated, too old, right? Too much work to, to, to get that money to do the upgrades. So what about next year? What about the year after? What about the year after that? If you're not going to do any upgrades now because it's too bad, right? You might have just put it in a boat, put it out in a harbor and light it on fire and sink it, right? That's, that was the attitude, and I was looking at the MP. We're part of Labrador, why aren't you, you know, this is money from the federal government, why don't you require them to do it if he wants the money for elsewhere, right? And then, that was 2019, what happened in 2020? COVID, COVID hit, what happened to all the students? The, 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 the students, they were either shut down and couldn't do their classes, in their schools, in the high schools, they couldn't go to school, or they started doing courses online, right? Online, 0.2 megabits to 1.9 megabits, right? It's being bumped off, being bumped off, being bumped off, right? Like that, that's that's what I that's what I deal with when I talk about gaps in services and infrastructure, you know. And another thing is. For students who are selecting their courses, they're coming up. Now you might have an older brother or a friend in, in grade 11 and grade 12, and you're starting to get ready to go and do your courses. You think a lot of the students are actually going to select these online courses after all the trouble? Right? Even teachers have, have trouble doing their, their, um, doing their work online. Right? You know, they, they get bumped off. I, I hear the stories all the time. So for me, it's, it's quite difficult, uh, you know. And, and I'll mention another thing now, because everyone thinks we're all going to be saved when it comes to online, because we have now the option of Starlink. We have people in, in my communities now that have already ordered and received the receiver and the modem for the Starlink, right? Really fast, good quality internet. But the upfront cost is about why eight hundred dollars? About eight hundred dollars. There's a lot of families in my communities that don't have eight hundred dollars upfront to actually to actually get this service. And then it's hundred and sixty dollars a month, right? So you know what's happening is people who are being able to access the internet and be able to avail of these courses and all that are people that are actually in families that have a better income. So how, how just is that? It's 2022, right? So this is what motivates me. This is what basically gets me up every morning, right? But it's difficult. It, it really is difficult, right? Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to mention something else too about the cost. The monthly internet fee for Bella Lyon I looked at my mother's bill um, at Christmas time when I was home. For this slow internet, 0.2 megabits per second up to 1.9 megabits per second. Not even average in 2 megabits per second. And her landline. So just that phone and that slow internet. Guess how much her, her bill is? $160. He says $160. How much do you think? More than that. 
more than that. <laughs> With taxes included, her, her bill, there's no TV, nothing on the bill, just the landline and the internet. Her bill is $207 with taxes included, right? So you know what a lot of people do? Some families who can't afford it, they go around, borrow on the internet, right? But you know something? To me, this is about, it's not, it's, we, we always want to strive for equity. Right? E equity. But we don't even have equality of services. Right? And you know, I always say, and it was told to me when I was when I was graduating, our youth are our future. But I got to say the provincial me government's message to the youth in my district, the Inu and the Inuit, is really counter to that. So what kind of future are you expecting, right? So, like, I, I, I always, a leader told me, he said, Lily, you gotta stop apologizing. Because I do apologize for my tone. I do apologize for my tone because I'm very angry when I talk about this. But you know something? More than that, I'm really hurt because I'm learning that since Confederation, since Joey Smallwood brought us into Confederation, right? My district never really had access to services and infrastructure. We never had the investments that the other districts had. And what's really, really upsetting to me is that the way we've been portrayed by government and the media is that we took what was given to us and we destroyed it. Our houses. Look at our houses. Right? Look at our buildings, look at our infrastructure. Well, they must have had it and they must have ruined it. Well, you know something, in Northern Labrador now, you can't buy paint in the community. You have to order it, and then you got to pay somebody. If I want to order three gallons of paint in name, I have to order it from Goose Bay, and I have to pay somebody about $70, $90 to do the TDG so that it can be shipped, and I have to pay the shipping and then the cost. And a lot of times in our communities, we're treated so badly by the merchants in Goose Bay that the paint we ordered is not even the right paint we ordered. When we order building materials, wood, it's got nothing to do with education, but it got to do with families. When we order wood, I can show you pictures where every stick of wood was cracked and rotten. How do wood rot? Moldy, right? And then for that person, they would have to take it and ship it back and try to get their money back, and they'd have to incur the cost of shipping. This is all about marginalization. It's all about victimization. So you want to know something? In my districts, my students, my students suffer intergenerational trauma. And worse than that, we're blamed for it. Right? That's why, boys, I, 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 I worked in construction, mining, and I worked in a man's world, so I, 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 sometimes I'm a little in, I use the wrong, the wrong words, but people. You know, I ran in a liberal district. Joey Smallwood was still alive in my district. I ran in a liberal district where basically you had to be from outside and probably dirt off the floor not to get elected. And I ran against a liberal incumbent. You know, and they pe the people basically voted for me. And that's what's happening in my district now. And I'd like to see it happen all across the province. Is let's stop voting blindly for parties. Let's start looking at who's actually going to be your MHA and what are they going to advocate for. And are they a decent person that's not going to be blinded by power? You put, a, you put a suit on a man, you watch him change, right? When I went into the House of Assembly, you know, basically the cost of some of those uh, MHA shoes could actually feed a family for a week. Actually, more like a month, but actually on the North Coast, the cost is so high, it'd be only a week, right? <laughs> but for, for me, the only way my district is going to get ahead is if the people in Newfoundland and Labrador understand and know the real truth in my district that my people are facing. 
You know, I'm talking about youth, I'm talking about education. Don't get me started on our elders. I'm going to take two minutes, Kirk. I'm way over my time. But the cost of transportation, because you can't drive, there's no, there's nothing, there's no highways connecting my communities, right? And the airline cost is so expensive. The closest community to Goose Bay is Riglet. For a, a round a round trip now to fly from Riglet to, to, to Goose Bay and back is probably about seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred and fifty dollars. Nain is more like a thousand to eleven hundred dollars. So if our elder has to go to the nursing home because the family can't look mm -hmm. after them because of health issues or other issues. And finally, the elder, because we tre treasure, we cherish our elders. That's our grandparents, that's our mothers, that's our sisters. If they have to go to the nursing home in Goose Bay, a lot of people will never see them again because they can't afford to fly down to Goose Bay to visit them. If they're lucky, they might have a medical appointment that takes them to Goose Bay. Right? How traumatic is that? You know, like when you say goodbye to your elder that's leaving to go to the nursing home. And that is the truth. Right? So, anyway, um, I am a little bit of a downer, <laughs> my presentation, but the, it's, it's really important for people to know that. This, this, this information, right? It's very, very important. But I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Um, it's hard not to get upset, and, and I hard not to hear that and get upset. It is easy for us to go home and kind of place that somewhere else. Uh, for Leela, it's a lived experience for all of us. I, I, I think if it's wrong for one, it's wrong for all, and, and, uh, and I, 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 I think there's, a, there's such a powerful message there. In the, and I, I really enjoy the, the power that Leela has in her, in her speaking and in her engagement with people in the province. And one of the things, like I say to the Sam University, you're small, but you're powerful. And since Leela has good humor, I can say this now. You're small, but you're powerful. <laughs> right? Five foot. <laughs> and, and you will win out. It's the resilience piece. Keep the fight. Okay. Uh,